Hey guys, how's it going? Octopus here and welcome back to Union Cross. So we're gonna be making a tier list, a tier list for every single tier that is out there currently and what's the best ones to make into seven star. We're gonna start off with tier three because tier three is accessible to everyone. I know a lot of you guys can't make seven stars right now, but hopefully in the future, PVE content starts giving us the ferry tickets so everybody can. And for all those that have the chance to make seven stars, hopefully this guide helps you out. I will be starting off tier three because there is some notable tier three medals in here that are just as good as other seven stars in higher tiers and even six star medals like Warrior of Light, Scar, Diz, all that they ready compete with them. Now I know this is not going to go towards everyone. Everyone has different medals, different traits. So if you do have extra attack on any of these medals in a tier, if it's part of the top charts, always go for the medal with extra attack. It's going to do more damage for you in every scenario. The worst case is that your extra attack might up some enemies counters, but we're just going for straight damage here because most of you guys are worried about PVP. So hopefully this will help you out for PVE, PVP, but it's also good for PVE. Again, a couple things things is that if you have plus 1000 strength as well in your traits it might be better than the other metal that has one multiplier more if you have enough plus 1000s on that trait metal uh, then you're probably going to go for that metal instead of that metal just like the extra attack so everything i'm about to show you guys is evolving the best multiplier possible meaning your best choice for the most damage we're not going into utility i'm hoping that all of you guys have your buffy metal already and you're not focusing on making seven star medals just to get that three upright strength or reverse strength you're just focusing on doing the most damage because the beginning of your keyblade you guys should have one of the old Kyries or shions a stained glass metal a prime metal that combination together works very good or the new Kyrie and Shion. you want to make sure you're getting your general strength up your general defense down on the enemy and of course your attribute strengths and defense downs as well once you start applying all that the next couple medals in your keyblade the third slot fourth slot fifth slot and pet slot should all be the highest multipliers possible that match those keyblade slots so this isn't going to show you guys the best medals to make seven stars depending on their utility this is going to be the best seven star medals for the most damage possible all right, now that the boring part's done, the little introduction I had there, we're going to jump in and see what we need to start looking at before we decide what's a good metal. So let's jump into what used to be the good old days where Union Cross was very simple. A metal had high damage, you pull for that metal. Not these days where a metal has a multiplier, but it's not 7 star yet, so we can't get it. <laughs> so here is the best of the best when it was only 6 stars in the game. And that's where we're going to base off where the minimum damage a 7 star medal should have to be considered being turned into a 7 star medal first. So back then, guys, uh, basically Fawn Fancy, Raker Keeper, Terra, and Warrior of Light were our best attacking medals. They had a multiplier of 21.96, and with their 30% guilt, they went to 24. That was pretty much the strongest medals in the game. Right before it was King Trident and Diz from the high score challenges. One being speed, one being magic. And then we had Scar who was pullable being the reverse power at a 21.90. So these all had the same amount of strength. It's just these guys came with 30% guilt. But we're not going to talk about that because most of our prime medals and our new Kyries have that included with them. So we don't have to worry too much about that increase. We'll apply that afterwards. We're going to look at the base, what the medals come with. So... Right before that was Lexius, and we all know how strong Lexius was as a 6-star. It's kind of sad that he's not on the top anymore because we just got him, especially some of these medals I'm about to mention. But looking at what we used to have as a base 6-star, our best medals were also Genie, Hercules, and even some people would still be using Lingering Will along with the Birth by Sleep trio and Soren Kyrie. So down here, this is way too low now to even consider to be good. 16 multipliers. They will do damage and a lot of quests, but when it comes to the serious content, it's not going to. So we got to scroll up and say our general idea, we got to look at the best of the best. So 19.8 is pretty good, but I'm going to say that we're going to start off with 20. 20 to 24, because if you pull the new Sykes as a 6 star, he comes with a 24 multiplier. That's a mercy pull of 11,600 jewels, which is pretty cheap. So we're going to say that a medal has to be a minimum of 22 to 24 if it's not that it's probably not worth to making a seven star because you probably have something in your inventory that's already doing pretty good we can go all the way down to 20 but there's a lot of three star uh tier three medals that are already at 20 so 22 to 24 is minimum for what i want to see being considered good seven star material not including the utility so now that we got that out of the way let's go back into 
what is normal now. So tier threes, because tier ones and twos are just for sub slots. Tier threes, of course, the best of the best. And I already said this, event medals back then pretty much take the top charts when it comes to this. So if you're holding on to a Setzer or an uh, Psyx B, the old tier three medals, they go up to 28.54. I would say do Psyx first. And then the other one is Setzer at 30. But the problem with Setzer is that he has a 50% chance of a critical hit. So that means he's got a 50% chance of doing 21 or 30. And you guys can already see his minimum at 21 is pretty much in the zone that we want. We want 22 to 24. But if he does hit that 50% chance of being a critical, he does 30 damage but i honestly don't really like setzer because i think it applies to each hit i could be wrong on that and even if it doesn't you still have a chance of doing a slower multiplier but even at that lower multiplier it's still gonna be pretty decent compared to the six stars when you look at our boy sykes here he's got to have more gauges full so 10 sp or more after he's activated to have that 28 but if he doesn't He's got a 24, and that's already better than the new Psyx that's in the game as a Mercy Pull. That is a Tier 8. So right here, Psyx B being the king champion of Tier 3s. The thing is, he's also a random attacker, but that's good for PvP, single target, and raid bosses. Uh, not so much raid bosses because the limbs, so random attack medal is trying to ignore that, but it is one enemy once the limbs are down. Then we got another event medal that's no longer around, Lexius B, who's got a multiplier of 25 poor 4 point 14 he's just got to be on the fifth slot or the pet slot to do the most damage then zaldin especially with the 25 so we're still above six stars and he's got a easy condition which is inflicts more damage with sled and saw five so the end of a keyblade most likely divine rose this guy's gonna shine and he is single target so you can choose who you're hitting then you go into the pullable metal so all these medals up here being the best is not going to help you new players, but down here, this will start helping you. If you guys do have Master Xehanort, he gets a multiplier of 24.88 in any scenario. So this is your best pick between him and Master Ericus for being 7 stars because this was the magic and this is the power version. They both do 24.88 and you can upgrade these guys with your bronze tickets. So you already have something stronger than the new Psyx, that's Psyx Kai or Psyx Plus that's in the polls currently in the game being whatever date you guys are watching this or the day of the video. And then you go back into event medals, which they're sitting at 24.22. You have Goofy and Donald here being a random attack medal with no condition. It also comes with an upright strength, so that's kind of nice. And then, of course, Meow Jesse, which was king when he first came out for free-to-play players, and he has a huge multiplier of 24.22. So this is tier threes. You're already doing great. And now we're jumping into pullable medals. Medals like Arlanic Donald, but you have this condition inflicts more damage the more gauges required for the next medal. So so you, there is a special condition to get that 24. They aren't the really best to go for. You really want to focus on these two guys for first. And if you need a speed medal to be able to do any of that, you guys got to go a little bit lower because the condition is kind of weird. You can pull it off, but as long as you have heavy hitting medals in there, you're going to be okay. Everything else starts to drop into the 23s like you guys can see. Another event medal being Luxord B having that 23.72 but again a 50 percent chance of being a critical attack the same thing 50 50 of the low attack or big attack and then of course you've got the halloween donald b and the goofy halloween goofy at 23.72 so right here all on this page guys you can see you're sitting at 23 multipliers these are all great choices the top ones you want to go for are all those event medals pullable medals is master ericus and master xehanorts and of course from there you want to go down and look at these guys rock titan is a very good choice as well he's got no condition uh, besides having more hp and i choose this as not a condition because you're usually healing yourself with a Kyrie medal or Shion medal so you're always full health when you activate these medals 23.58 when we looked at the original six stars that's already doing better all of these medals pretty much here are going to do great damage it looks more damage the lower your hp this is the case where they have good multipliers but the problem is you have to be damaged and not have a healer so that works if you're running like stained glass medals with prime medals and you're being hurt because it's multiple turns these guys can kick in and do some good damage for you just it's better to use metals to say the higher HP or just don't have that condition at all. So as you go down, there's plenty of choices you guys want to go for. Here's being another one that's really good. The Kingdom Hearts 2 Black Coat Re 
Riku B. He is like a jewel that nobody really knows about. A 23.32. If you have extra attack on this guy and you make him a 7 star, you're going to be doing some really good damage, especially in PvP. And then so on and so on, when you start hitting the 22s, you don't want to really look over here. But basically, uh, you can go this low. All tier 3s have a very good place. The tier 3s you want to stay away from is when you start hitting it down here into the 20s. Because you most likely already have some 6 stars or 7 stars that you pull from the tier 4 banners that are going to do better than this. But specifically, just focus on anything that is 22 or higher. Top choices being what I showed you. You also have another organization member here that does it, but he has to flick more damage to lower the tier number. So, you've got a lot of good choices, but my first first pick has to be that Saix. And then from there, for pullable medals, are these two guys right here to do that great damage that you guys want to do as tier 3. Now, when we want to look at AoE medals, because you guys might want some AoE damage in there. So, for tier 3 AoE medals, it isn't crazy multipliers like what I just showed you for single target and random, but for AoE, we, tier 3 7 stars are already doing better than our 6 stars of tier 7s and 8s or just around above tier 3. You guys can see that a tier 7 Roxas B event medal does 21.06 but it's got to have inflicts more damage with one enemy. So this doesn't really count as an AoE damage. It does AoE damage at 13.76 but that's extremely low. You got to look at medals that are officially AoE. It just says AoE and that's it. It doesn't say inflicts more damage with one enemy. That just means if it's by itself, the enemy, it'll take that huge multiplier. If it's not by itself, it'll take the smaller multiplier. So we got to look at medals like this. And when you get away from the event medals, because all the three up here, if you guys do have event medals for tier threes and you want AOE damage, of course, Hercules uh, and Phil is a good one. The Maleficent I just showed you. But when you go down here into stuff like the Ice Titan, he's got a 16.36. When we compare that back to six stars only, you look at six stars and we got to take away tier three. When you look at all the old six stars being something like Kiart 16, he's got a multiplier of 15.38. That's already better than our old meta. Even stained glass middles only got a 15.4. I'll show you guys right here without their guilt increase. Then you got EX medals like Sephiroth and Cloud that again 15.38. So you can see that these tier threes are better as seven stars and a lot of t uh, six star medals that are tier sevens and eights. So even if you come down here and you start looking at World Final Fantasy medals, they do a good job as well, 16.28. Of course, this isn't crazy good multipliers compared to what we're going to show you in the next videos. But you guys can see the point, like if you guys want to make this Pete into a 7 star, a tier 3 Pete, he's going to have a 15.8. That's already better than everything I showed you as a 6 star uh, tier 7 and 8. So it's pretty much what choice you guys want to make. Go for the ones that have no condition. So Sykes A, 16.36 AoE damage, beautiful AoE damage for starting off at tier 3. 16.36. Anything in the 15s and the 16s, just focus on things that already have that huge multiplier. And all you got to do is click on a 6 star medal and push evolve and it'll show you what the multiplier is going to be for that 7 star. So, best case scenario guys is just focus on single target medals. AoE damage medals are going to come into the higher ranks for your tier 3s. Try to focus just on that single and random because single target and random medals get a bigger boost for becoming 7 stars. So save your uh, tier 3 7 stars for these medals, the single target and raid medals. When it comes to AoE, tier 4 will take care of that for you. Uh, but you go into like the 19s and below, there's really no point except for sub slots. So that's the last thing I want to say guys is that once you start seeing your medals that only go into the 19s or below, so 19 multiplier or 18 multiplier, you want to start focusing on these medals just for sub slots. So if you have a fairy stars and you can't continue the pathway without having upgrade magic, go grab your level 3 fairies and upgrade Jasmine because she has a good multiplier, but she has that sub slot requirement. So you want to be able to fill those little spaces so you continue your path so your Keyblade gets stronger. That is pretty much everything for the tier 3 guys. Tier 3 isn't too exciting. Like I said in the starting, make sure you have your buffers in the beginning. Being Akari, being copied with a Kiar Bond, Sky, Nominate, whatever your copycat metal to copy them at least twice. Or have one of each on your Keyblade if you have multiple colors. Or stained glass metals with prime metals and so on. You want to make sure that your first couple metals are buffers and everything else I just showed you with the highest multipliers possible. And you guys will do a lot better in all the content in the game. So, that is tier 3's, um, this was kind of was like a little rough, this is going to be the introduction to this, as I go into tier 4's, 5's, 6's, 7's and 8's, it's going to be more straightforward, because it's going to be very, very 
uh, like you know what's good and you know what's not good. There isn't like a big range. Tier threes have a lot of metals in it and a lot of them have weird conditions. As we go into tier fours, five, six, it's very straightforward what you guys want to go for. If you guys want to leave anything down below, tell people your setup with your tier threes, how far they've gotten you because tier threes really do have a lot of damage and they shouldn't be left behind because of all these new metals. Some of them are really good but some of them just don't make the cut. Hopefully something here helped you. If it did, don't forget to hit that like button, guys. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep on smiling, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>